Hello again, this is David Hillier and I will be giving you another brief video on finance. This time I'll be speaking about three main concepts to do with finance and that is the cash flows themselves, the timing of cash flows and the risk of cash flows. Before I do that, I will be explaining where cash comes from and how cash is generated in a company and look at the way in which it flows through the economic system. So this video will take about 15 minutes and it is linked to chapter 1 of the textbook for the course Corporate Finance. If you wish to get any backup information or spend time reading about the concepts in more detail then please have a look at this book. Now before we go on to talk about these concepts in the book I talk about the financial manager and the financial manager is the individual who is responsible for the finance function or in the company as you would expect. There are five areas in which the financial manager is involved and it depends upon the size of the company whether these responsibilities are concentrated in one person or whether they are split across a number of people or a number of divisions. In the video one I spoke about the three areas that finance concerns itself with and that is how to invest, where to get the cash that allows you to invest and managing liquidity. And the first three boxes here along the top line relate to each of those areas. So a small company, you would have one individual dealing with everything. In a larger company, you may have different divisions dealing with each item. The financial manager may also oversee the accounting function within the firm and frequently a financial manager will also be an accountant. There's also the audit function and the audit function is there to ensure that the financial operations and the financial recording, the, the reporting of the company is appropriate and it is at a level that allows managers and also investors to make decisions about uh, their own firm. And finally, the fifth one, which is, in a sense, self-explanatory. The financial manager is there to ensure that the company is performing well and will make decisions that will hopefully improve the financial welfare of the firm. So that's just an overview of what a financial manager does. And within any organisation, there will be someone or some people that will deal with these areas. So now we talk about cash flow. And cash is what we are concerned with in the whole area of finance. Cash is very different from profit and it's very different from loss because those are accounting figures. We will talk about that in a la later slide. But for now, we're going to look at cash flow and how cash flow is generated and, you know, where it comes from. You'll look at the slide and you'll see that there are a number of different items which have a letter beside them. So at the very top, you can see cash for securities issued by the firm and you've got an A beside it. Now, we're going to be talking about each of these different areas. You can get this in the textbook. So... You know, if you want to read this and take your time reading this, then just go to the textbook. textbook. So, how does cash flow in a company? Well, first of all, a company must make a decision on whether they wish to invest in a particular project or invest in an asset. It may have money within the company that it can use for these investments. But in the majority of cases, the company will have to go outside to find money from investors. And we see that that money comes from, or the cash comes from the financial markets. 
Those investors may be banks, they may be financial institutions, they may be individuals. And the company will raise cash in the financial markets and it will be either in the form of debt, borrowing, or it will be in the form of providing ownership, some element of ownership uh, in the company. So this process of raising cash in the financial markets we call financing. And cash will come from this financing activity. And that allows the company to invest in the assets. And we say that's at point B on the left-hand side. And those assets may be short-term, which we call current, or they may be long-term, which we say is non-current. Now, those assets are expected to generate cash flow. And the cash flow that comes from those assets is used in a number of different ways. So we're at part C now. So first of all, every company should pay taxes. And so an element of the cash flow that is generated by the company must go to the government for taxation and taxes that the company has to pay. I say should because if you've looked at the news recently, a number of companies have been able to use vehicles which will allow them to pay less tax than the effective tax rate would anticipate um, would be paid. So once taxes have been paid, the company then must pay interest in all its loans. And this is, we're now at part F. The interest payments will go to the lenders. That is the provider of the liabilities, whether that's short term or whether that's long term. They will also make a decision on whether they pay dividends. And dividends go to the equity holders. And dividends are chosen each year. With an interest payment, it's usually set in the contract. But with dividends, it's up to the the management to decide how much they can afford to pay out in any one period. And the money that's left over, we call retained uh, cash, and that's Part E. You can go through this whole process. So every period, the company may decide that they want to invest. If they don't have enough retained cash flow, they have to go to the financial markets. Going to the financial markets means that they have to pay back in some way either dividends or an interest. And you just have this cash flow uh, cycle that goes through the company on a continual basis. So in finance, we go to the left-hand side and we look at techniques that allow us to choose the best type of investment. We look at the right-hand side where we decide what the best type of financing structure we should uh, opt for. Should we have equity alone? Should we have debt alone? Should we combine the two of them? And we also have to think about how much cash we should retain within the firm. So looking at finance, we're just really looking at the study and and management of cash flow. So we have three concepts that I'll be discussing in this uh, lecture, in this video lecture. We have the accounting figures versus cash flows. I've already mentioned those. We have the timing of the cash flows and how that impacts upon our decision. And we also have the risk of the cash flows and how that affects our decision. So we'll be looking at all three of these in the forthcoming slides. So let's just start off with a very simple example that's in the book, in chapter one. And we're looking at a company, we'll call it Midland PLC. And this company trades gold. So it's a hypothetical company. Now we say that this company at the end of the year has sold 2,500 ounces of gold and for a total amount of 1.67 million euros. The company paid for the gold and they paid 1 million euros at the beginning of the year. So they've sold the gold at 1.6 million, they've paid 1 million. Now, where accounting flow and cash flow, you find there's differences, is 
to do with when it's getting paid and, and how we account for these types of transactions. So in accounting, you account for the transaction normally at the point the transaction takes place. With finance, you look at the cash flow and you really just look at when the cash flow comes in and when the cash flow comes out. And in this example, we see that the company paid cash for the gold. So it sold the gold for 1.67 million. Uh, that 1.67 million is in credit so they haven't yet received the 1.67 million so we're looking at uh, a situation where cash has gone out of the company and they're yet to receive the money for the sales that they made so we're going to now look at the differences between uh, these two so let's start off with a look at the the income statement because we recognize the transaction when it takes place in accounting we see that we've got sales 1.67 million and we've got costs which is 1 million and the total profit then is just a difference between the sales and the costs and that's 670,000 euros if we look at the cash flow we see something completely different we see that there was a cash outflow in uh, the period that we're looking at but there was no cash inflow because the company hasn't yet received the cash so we see a difference we see that there's actually a negative cash flow for this period of 1 million euros. And yet they're showing a profit. And that means that, you know, if we use accounting data just unadjusted, you're going to come up with a very different view of a particular investment than if you use the cash flow. And that's something which is consistently applied throughout the study of finance. And it's, and it's an area that if you look at chapter 7, chapter 5, 6, chapters 4, they all are thinking of the same thing here, that is when do the cash flows occur? And that is a fundamental part of our analysis. The second uh, area is to do with the timing of the cash flows, when the cash flow occur. Now, it's not really just looking at accounting versus cash flows. We're now going to look at timing and say, well, OK, you know, let's take these two projects. What Project A is uh, a project that costs €10,000 and it will return €20,000 in the fourth year. So you can see that there was a profit in year four of 10,000 euros. The total income that's coming in is 20,000 euros. Now, let's look at product B. And product B is different from product A because whereas product A gives you one cash flow in year four, product B gives you four cash flows, which amount to a smaller amount, 16,000, but you get the cash flows earlier. And the question that I would ask is, which product is the best? Now, I'm not going to answer that just now. I'll answer that later once I've shown you the techniques. But this is an area, a very simple example, admittedly. But it's an area where if you make it more complex and you expand it to the real marketplace, is something which is very real and can have a, a massive impact on decisions you make. So if you were just thinking of profit and loss, then you would say, well, product B gave you a, a profit of 6,000 euros. Product A gave you a profit of 10,000 euros. So on a profit and loss basis, we are looking at product A being better. But it may be that in some situations, product B is better. And then we look at the third scenario, and that's the risk of the cash flows. I'm using this example that's from the book again. It's a Norwegian firm thinking of investing in two different countries. And one view is that the, the Netherlands, which is one of the options, is relatively a safe investment. And the other view is, is that South Africa is relatively more risky than the Netherlands. And it's a simple one-period model. So you make the investment and after one year, uh, the company closes down the operations. So, in the next slide, I'll show the scenarios that the manager has to consider. And they have to decide w which project should be undertaken. Should it be in the Netherlands or should it be in South Africa? So, let's look at these. So, we've got three scenarios, pessimistic, most likely, and optimistic. And it's a Norwegian firm, so we're looking at Norwegian Krona. 
in the Netherlands, under the pessimistic scenario, you will receive 750,000 Norwegian kroner. But in the pessimistic scenario in South Africa, you receive nothing. Under the optimistic scenario, in the Netherlands, you receive significantly less than in South Africa. And the most likely scenario is that South Africa will give you a higher cash flow. And the question that you face is which project is better, the Dutch project or the South African project? Again, this is a, a question that we will answer in future videos. So, those are the three concepts that I just want to get you to think about just now. We will go into these in a lot more detail in the future. So, to finish off this video, just want to ask a question. And that is, what is the goal of financial management? Is it to maximise the share price of the company? Is it to manage the company's risk? Is it to avoid financial distress? You know, all of these areas are things that a financial manager must consider. You might think, well, okay, what about how do we apply this to a non-profit making organisation? How do we apply it to a family firm? How do we apply it to a large multinational? Are the, the concepts the same? Now, in finance, we say that our decision should be that we maximise the value of the owner's equity. Now, that's a very simple objective. And, and although I talk about this in the book, and that's, the I, I suppose, the conclusion that you make in an, a world where there's no transaction costs, that everything is perfect, when you maximise the value of the equity, you're automatically maximising the value of the firm. But in real life it might not necessarily be the case because dynamic conditions sometimes ensure that you have to think differently. So if you're a company that is in deep financial distress, what should you be doing? Should you be prioritising risk management? Should you be doing everything to work on avoiding financial distress? Forgetting about what's going on in the market, but it's all about getting the operations of the company in place. So things can change. I suppose the simple message to take from this is that in a world where everything is perfect, all of these different areas combine into one thing, which is if you do everything right, if you make the right decisions, the value of your equity will be maximised. And if the value of your equity is maximised, then in a perfect world, the value of the firm will be maximised. Okay, so until next time, uh, in the next video, uh, Thank you very much.